produce the righteousness God desires. So get rid, throw it out. I threw out some clothes this week. Has anybody ever been at a point where it's like you just look through the house and like, I just got to throw away everything. <laughs> you know, you get a little bit too cluttered over here. You just got to throw stuff away. You're like, I've had this since high school and, you don't, and I graduated in 78. Something need to leave. It says get rid of all the filth and evil in your life. It didn't say God was going to get rid of it. There is a point where we got to take our huggies off. Take off the pampers. And we have to get rid of it. We have to throw the things away. We have to go through our phone and be like, not healthy, not healthy, not healthy. Definitely not this one. It says, so get rid of all the filth and evil in your lives. Mm. I want you to think about this. You can't get rid of things that you like. Some people like cussing people out. I know people who are professional profanity. Uh, they got a PhD in cussing people out. And, and, and some of them call me. They're like, look, I know you saved and all that. And I know you're trying to do right, but if somebody get on your nerves, just give me their number. I'll do it for you. Now, they were like, I get energy from doing it. I'm like, how you get energy from cussing people out? It's because they love the dark place. They love swimming in the place with the lights off. We have it said we can't get rid of things that we like. If there's evil in our lives, if there's places that we know don't please God in our lives and we like it, we have to pray and ask God, God, help me to hate the thing that you hate. Help me to hate the thing that displeases you. Now, if, now I know a lot of people ain't going to pray, but I, I, I challenge you to expose the thing. Some of us just need to put shine the light of Christ on the dark places in our lives and say, God, it don't please you. And I want to please you. I want to please you. And then it says, and humbly accept the word God has planted in your heart, for it has the power to save your soul. Before the power comes, you got some work to do. We have to clean it up. We have to get rid of the things. We have to bring the, the God, give me a changed taste bud on the things that don't please you. Give me a, a, a new breath, a new way to think about the things that don't please you. I might have enjoyed, you know, dropping it like it was hot or lukewarm, whatever the case is. Some of us a little bit older and our knees not like how they used to be, but we used to enjoy when mystical came on, shaking it fast and watching yourself. If you don't know what I'm talking about, then God bless you. You don't need to know. Verse 22 says, but don't just, oh, here we go. But don't just listen to God's word. You, what's that M word? Say it a little louder for the people online. You must do what it says. When we love the darkness, we think obeying God is optional. We think it's cool. That's what the word saying, I might do it. That's what the word saying, I'll think about doing it. I'll get to it next week when I'm on my diet. I'll get to it next week when I stop, uh, you know, roll, rolling one, rolling one up. And, and I'll stop when I stop liking the other things. But it says I must do the thing. Otherwise, otherwise, you are only fooling who? Yourself. For if you listen to the word and don't obey it, it is like glancing at your face in the mirror. You see yourself and walk away and forget what you look like. But if you look carefully into the perfect law that sets you free, 
And if you do what it says, you don't forget what you heard. Then God bless me with a car. Then God help my relationships. Then God deliver me. No, wait, wait, wait. Before you go asking the king for his kingdom things, we need to throw away the stuff that don't look like the kingdom. Somebody didn't like that. Isn't this fun? I didn't write it. I just, I'm not a, I'm not a pastor. I just preach a lot. Well, never mind. Romans 23, I'm sorry, Romans 3 and 23 says this. And li listen, all of us got to do the same thing. All of us have to do the same thing. All of us have to clean up the dark places. All of us have to shine the light. Nobody in this thing is perfect. God don't want, not expecting perfection. He's expecting confession. He's expecting you to confess this thing that you're struggling with so he can make it right. We, we, we get so prideful. Oh, I got it. I'll stop when I'm ready. If you would have had the power to stop it by yourself, you wouldn't have started it. Okay. All right. 3 and 23 says this. For everyone has done what? Everyone has what? Everyone has sinned. We all fall short of God's glorious standards. The King James said we all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That's why we know coming out of dark places, trying to find out what's the places that we need to address, that we need God's help. We all have sinned, so that means I need God in every area. I need God because I fall short. I need God because I might not speak to somebody the, the right way. I need God because I might have a regular face, but somebody thinking I'm looking at them crazy. They're like, well, I just look that way. This is how I woke up. And I need God to explain to them that I just look this way. Because everybody ain't got patience with you. And you need God to help you because because some of us. I'm OK, I'm going to just talk about me. OK, I'm, I'm going to leave you all alone. I'm talking about me. I, I had a Ph.D., an M.D., What's another, what's another, uh, I had a doctorate in holding grudges. And if you did something to me, I don't care if we was in second grade. If I would have seen you after college, I still ain't like you. And I need God to keep that thing from off of me. Because listen, being a pastor ain't no joke. Because people do you crazy and be like, oh, it's your fault. I was just praying for you. Why did? But God, no, I, I listen, I need God. Oh, y'all ain't going to tell the truth. I'm going to tell I need God, y'all, because I know if I rely on me, I'm going to mess it up. If I rely on my, my, my thinking, I'm going to mess everything up. If I rely on me uh, 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 raising my son, I'm going to mess it up. If I rely on me trying to minister to somebody out of my own thought, I'm going to mess it up. I got to pray. I got to have a prayer life. I got to say, God, you are above. I am beneath. And I need your heavenly thoughts because your thoughts are higher than my thoughts. Your ways are higher than my ways. You see things that I can't see because I got blind spots. And I need you to illuminate your light in all of my blind spots. It says we all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You don't got it all together with your cute self. Just like I don't have it all together. That's why we need the cross of Christ. I need the blood of Jesus to wash me. Wash me again. Wash me again. Wash me again. Because I need him until I see him. Until I meet him face to face, I need him every day on this earth. I need him every day, every single day. And, and when you are walking in the dark, you think you got it all together. You think in your Christian walk, you are killing the game. Oh, man, don't nobody pray like me. Let me tell y'all something. If you ever receive anything from up here, any wisdom, in any healing, anything that God has done in your life, just know it's not the man. It came from above. 
God going to always get the credit from up here. God is always going to get, because God forbid anything happen to me. You're going to be like, that's why I don't go to church. Well, let me tell you something. It's God's power. It's God's wisdom. All gifts belong to him. All right. Hallelujah. Look at somebody and just look at them. I ain't going to tell you to say nothing because people are like, look at, slap your neighbor, tear their wig off, and tell them that God is exposing folks. No, I ain't telling nobody to do that. <laughs> Matthew 6, 23 says this, Lord, please don't let that happen on the internet. Somebody will take that one thing. He said, pull your neighbor wig off and tell them God is exposing people. It said... Matthew 6, 22 in the Amplified says this. The eye is the lamp of the body. I'm going to read that again. The eye is the lamp of the body. So if your eye is clear, spiritually perspective, your whole body will be full of of light, benefiting from God's precepts. Now, we were talking about darkness and light. It says the eye is the lamp of the body. Now, you have to be careful what you put in front of these eyes. David said in Psalms, I will be careful what I put before my eyes. Me and one of my homeboys, we go to movies all the time. But when listen, this this is this is my conviction, and you ain't got to do this. I stopped watching rated R movies. Me and we want to see some stuff, and then we're like, oh, it's rated R. We just because we have to be careful what we put in front of these eyes. We can't, you. Know, ooh, thank you, God. We have to take more responsibility about what we put in ourselves. Because it said the eye is the lamp of the body. And it needs to be full of light. I don't want to put darkness in front of my eyes. Because I don't want to put so much darkness in front of my eyes that my eyes start adjusting to the dark. That my, my perspective start adjusting to darkness. My opinion start adjusting to darkness. The, the way that I move, oh, that's okay. It, it, it start adjusting to darkness. The devil wants to deceive us because he want to keep putting darkness in front of our eyes so we can think that darkness is normal. And I, and I want you to know that it's not normal because you are a child of light. He said, I brought you out of darkness into my marvelous light. You are a child of light. You got to be careful what you're feeding your eyes. The devil wants you to adjust your, your thought process and to adapt to things that the world say. Oh, I'll try anything once. The Bible never said that. I'll try anything once. Oh, really? You going to sip some Drano? Never mind. All right. It said, <laughs> benefit, let me go back. Your whole body will be full of light, benefiting from God precepts. What's a precept? A precept is a general rule intended to regulate behavior or thought. When my eyes, when I put the word of God in my eyes, it regulates my thoughts. It regulates my behavior. The more word I get, the more I can walk the straight and narrow. The less I get, the less I can walk the straight and narrow because I'm not going to know how to walk this walk because the word is the only thing that's going to regulate my thoughts, regulate my mind. Amen. But if your eye is bad, spiritually, what? Wait, wait, wait. If your eye is bad, spiritually blind. Blindness refers to darkness. If your eye is spiritually blind, when you can't see, you're fumbling around life, hitting your knees on a dresser, stomping your toe on a corner of the bed, calling out every name possible because you can't see. And even 
in your spirit. You're walking around being exposed to things. That's why people are so open to so many things. They're open to energy rocks. They open to magic Uno cards. They're open to psychics. They open to all of these things because they're spiritually blind and they don't have enough word in them to walk the straight and narrow knowing that it's only one God. It's only one and nothing is higher than him. Amen. He said, but if you are, if your eye is bad, spiritually blind, your whole body will be full of darkness. Devoid of God's precepts. You have no way to regulate your thoughts in darkness because you don't have the word to guide you. The Bible says that that the word is a light to your feet, a lamp to your pathway. I don't have a lamp if I'm not plugged into God. How can I know where to go if God is not guiding me? You'll just be another person chasing money, chasing women, chasing other things, chasing everything but the only one you need, Jesus. It says, so if the very light inside of you, your inner self, your heart, your conscience, it's darkness. How great and terrible is that darkness? When you when you leave and, and, and when you get the midweek guide, and if you get in the midweek guide and reading it, while you're doing it, I want you to pray and ask God to reveal to you what's my blind spots. Where's the place, God, that I need to that's not pleasing you. We have to get to a place where if, if we can totally surrender to God, how different would our lives look? How different would your life look 20 years ago if you surrendered to God? 10 years ago if you totally surrendered to God? How different would your life look if you surrendered to God when you was young? Where would you be? But thank God we serve a God that redeems the time. Hallelujah. Thank God we, res- we, we, we serve a God that even if you made right, right decisions back then, he can put us to a place that was better than we made all the right decisions. Amen. 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 When we look at our reflection through the lenses of the word of God, we can't ignore the things that don't look like the word. That's what this portion of of, of the sermon series is, yes, we're talking about being the reflection in the light of Christ. But when we see the things that's not like God, we cannot look away like the scripture said and act like it's not there. There's a thing there. And God need to help us there. There's something in my relationships that is affecting me that I need God's help. What is that place in you? You know you better than I know you. You know you better than everybody. What's that hidden thing that the enemy is trying to use to bury in your heart that you can't let go of? Is it unforgiveness? Listen, we could talk about alcohol addiction and drug addiction. That's the easy surface stuff. I'm talking about what is that thing that you use your intellect to manipulate somebody less intelligent than you? What is that thing that you can do that can change the the scale that makes it in your favor, knowing that it's wrong? What is the thing that when when you think about God wouldn't be pleased there, where's that place that the if the light shine on it, you got to address it. Somebody say, I'm going to address it. I'm going to address it. I'm going to address it because we don't want to walk around. Listen, we have to have spiritual goals. I don't want to be the same Christian I was last year. I don't want to be the same uh, uh, pastor I was uh, when we first opened the Grove. I want to be better. I want to be more empowered by God. If the promises of God said that I can have it, I want it. He said the promises of God, God promised to never leave me. I better believe it. He said he's going to strengthen me. I better receive it. The promises of God say that I'm going to have hope. Then I want all the hope. I want all the promises of God. And I don't want nothing in my life blocking me. From receiving what God has for me. Some of us ain't been happy in years. We'll laugh at a joke, but when we go home, we miserable. God don't want us to be in misery. The Bible said I, he 
enjoys the prosperity of his servant. And prosperity is not just money. God don't care about your money. He don't care if you have it. He don't care. He cares your relationship with money, but he cares if how your soul is. He wants you in joy. That's why he said, I give you joy unspeakable. If God wants you to have unspeakable joy, something in us got to, got to shift. Why can't you be happy at work? Why can't you be happy talking to your spouse? Why can't you be happy talking to people on the phone? What's the thing in you that needs the light of Christ for God to switch up our whole lifestyle? Is it the music we listening to? Don't get me started on there because, you know, some people like, don't, don't, don't mess with my Drake pastor. You, you know, you all right and all that. And I, I know you can, you can put a, a rhyming word or two together. Don't mess with my stuff. I still like, you know, listening to Kiss and, and uh, Ozzy. O Never mind. I still like my heavy metal. I still like Otis sitting on the dock of a bay. Don't mess with my music. Well, it, is the music making your eye? Light or dim? Is the TV shows you love making your eyes light or dim? Is these, is the, is these relationships, that you, is these conversations that you're having at work, are, are they making the light go in your eyes or is it making darkness go in your eyes? We got to have, we got to draw a line in the sand and say, listen, I'm not going to be the same Christian I was. I want to grow spiritually. I want God to take me places. I want the I want God to be proud of his kid. I want to say, send me out and I go, but I go in power. Listen, I don't want my light to be half lit. I know the young people say lit all the time. I don't want my, my light to just flicker. I don't want to be half a torch. I want to be like the, the, the this for, for comic book people. I want to be the human torch. I want to walk in the room and say flame on and, and the power of God come on me and and, 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 and to heal people and people can be, be recovered in their mind and things can happen that are right in the eyesight of God. When can we go and help people for real? We can't help people for real if our light is flickering. I want to be the, like the Bible says, a light on the city, on a hill that cannot be, cannot be dark. And I want the shine of Christ to come through me. I want to be a conduit of God. I want to be somebody that God can say, okay, we, we, look, we know we trust him. Go and send him over there. I want to be in the green beret of heaven. Special forces. Look, I want to be the people that they say, what, what, what's, what's Tom Cruise? He, he MI6? What is, is that right? That's right, Chris, MI6. MI, I want to be MI6 of heaven. I want to be the one that God sent on the special missions. But to do that, I want God to trust me. I can't have darkness in my heart. I can't have hatred in my heart. I can't have unforgiveness. I need God to show me where I need to clean up so I can get the speak and spam, the comic, whatever I needed to do. What, what's, the, what's the stuff called? The, uh, 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 what's the stuff that smell good? The, the purple, the purple. I need a fabuloso. I need spiritual fabuloso in my heart. I need God to clean me up. I don't need Mr. Clean. I need Mr. Jesus. I need Mr. Nazareth. I need Mr. Resurrector. I need Mr. Third Day Riser. I need the one who rose with all power to clean me up. I can't be the Tom Cruise of the kingdom and if I got stuff that I'm hiding from God. God already know our mess ups. He already know. But he is so patient that he'll give us time. He say, you, that's why the Bible say you work out your soul salvation with fear and trembling. I want you to bring that thing to me and lay it at my feet. You lay it at his feet. That's why I say you get rid of all filth and evil and, and all of this stuff because God wants you to surrender the dark things so he can give you more light, so he can make you more effective, so, he can re so we can be true reflectors of the goodness of God. 
I had so many scriptures, I only got the two. <laughs> Something ain't right. Man, I need to hurry up before my uh, subscription to sermons.com run out, you know, and I don't have no more sermons for y'all. I'm playing, y'all. I'm playing. I'm like, it's a sermons.com? I don't know. Let me go back to the scripture. Matthew. One more scripture, and we're going we gonna to tell God thank you. 1 John 2, 7 and 12. Dear friends, I'm not writing you a new commandment for you. Rather, it is an old one you have had from the very beginning. It's old commandment. To love one another is the same message you heard before. Yet, it is also new. Jesus lived the truth of this commandment. And you also are living it. For the darkness is disappearing. And the true light is already shining. Darkness is disappearing out of your life right now. The more we let God in, darkness is disappearing from your life right now. God is always working. He's working right now. A baby is being born. Somebody is being healed. God is moving. He's making night turn in the day. He's always moving. And when we acknowledge that darkness is being pushed back, by the light of Christ, we gain more confidence in walking in that light. Mm. For darkness is disappearing, and the true light is already shining. If anyone claims, I am living in the light, but hates a fellow believer, that person is still living in darkness. I don't want us to be a church that's deceived. I don't want us to be saints that's deceived, thinking we doing right and we got this stuff in our heart against people and we walking in darkness. Satan loves deception. He loves to make you think you the prophet to the nations and you got a grudge problem. Don't be a person that think you're doing right. But in the end, when the light come on, all the darkness is in your heart. Anyone who loves a fellow believer is living in the light and does not cause others to stumble. But anyone who hates a fellow believer is still living and walking in darkness such a person does not know the way to go, having been blinded by darkness. I'm writing you who are God's children because your sins have been forgiven through Jesus. I came out of darkness with hope. We all came out of darkness with the hope of Christ that we are forgiven, knowing that we're forgiven, we can walk confidently knowing that God has set us free. Amen. Did anybody get anything out of the word of God tonight? Two people. We'll take two people. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I can't believe we only hit four scriptures. God help me. Y'all See, somebody wasn't praying for me. That's all that was. Y'all better start praying for me up in here. I, I, when you leave this place, meditate on these scriptures. Ask God to show you the places that we need help in. Amen. Amen. Let's stand to our feet. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank God we had powerful worship today. And amen. And we and if you are online and, and if you wanted a Grove Night Sue. Haven't been feeling well, sick. If you got COVID, we are praying for you. We love you. We can't wait to see you back after you take two weeks off. Glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I, I told one of, one of our dear brothers, he was like, hey, he had it. And he was like, I'm good this week. I'm like, no, nah, sit this one out. Be the director over the pajama ministry. 
we'll see you in another week. Glory to God. Amen. Before, before we leave, if you are not saved, we, we want you saved. If you need to rededicate your life tonight, we want you to rededicate your life tonight. If you, if you are somebody who's like, hey, I want to join the group. This is a good church to, to, to join for six months. We, we all right. God is doing his thing. Amen. G- say, it, say it again. Okay, all right. All right. You say we teething? Amen. We teething. We cutting, we cutting gum up in here. Amen. We should have a six-month shirt. Six months, we cutting gum. Christian, you know what to do. Um, he could design, he designed, he can design that shirt. He got it, yeah. Amen. Like I said, if if this is a brook that you believe that God has called you to, we want you to join uh the Grove. Amen. Online, if you want to be a, a e-member, I just made that up. I'm sure some churches have said an e-member. If you want to be an e-member and you want to be a part of the Grove, we want you, you know, the anointing is not confined to uh to the internet. It can come through the screen. Amen. Bow, bow your heads all over the room. If you're somebody who needed to rededicate your life, just lift your hand. If you're somebody who uh, want to be saved, just lift your hands and we'll pray for you. So, amen. 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 Hallelujah. So, God, the ones who lifted their hands to rededicate, Lord, I just pray that you touch them now. Lord, uh, we pray as they have made it known that they could just confess it and just ask you to forgive. Lord, forgive us all, God. Wash us where we need wash. Hit us with that spiritual fabuloso in the name of Jesus. Lord, make us white as snow. We know you're coming back for a church without spot and without blemish. So, God, we just pray that as the word has went forth, that it went upon good ground and that we see a harvest produced. And Lord, for the ones that need healing, we pray healing now in the name of Jesus. And Lord, as we leave this place and not your presence, God, keep us safe. Touch our families. Bless us through this entire week, Lord. Lord, I just pronounce a blessing over to every one under the sound of my voice online. Lord, let your power invade their homes, God. Let your love, your grace, your mercy invade their homes and their hearts and their minds this week, God. Lord, let peace rest, rule, and abide in our house, God, in our cars, in our relationships, at our jobs, God. And God, we forever thank you for being such a wonderful, generous father. In Jesus' name, the grove is blessed and the people thereof is blessed. And all God's people say, amen, amen. Amen. We will see you next week. God bless you. Be blessed.